casters here to uh, get ourselves ready for the next series. But I got to say, it's always a pleasure talking to Toby. Oh, yeah. Make sure you check out his stream, too. The guy has been super funny, oh, so funny for such man. a long time, right? <laughs> Just like his reactions to everything that's going on on screen really top notch so you know he's not just a player too he's also a memer <laughs> <laughs> he's also like a memer I, on that shy kind of exterior there's really a hardcore memer in there don't you worry memes are good he liked memes yeah so but so uh <laughs> i do believe we're gonna go ahead and throw up to the next uh next match that we have next series that we have because we're already into the halfway point at least i guess almost halfway point as you know having cloud nine back on the stage here today guys it's uh it's gonna be a fun one especially with a little bit of tight competition oh yeah this is definitely my match of the day cloud nine versus team liquid these two teams have had mm -hmm. a lot of the same roster for the past couple of years and have seen a lot of success from it as well three members from both teams returning from their strong performances in the last year where cloud nine had first in spring second in spring proving grounds and the second in academy playoffs well as team liquid second in spring second in summer first in summer playoffs and second in proving grounds all across so both these teams having a lot of opportunity to play against each other last year exactly and we're gonna go ahead and throw up uh some of the moments from that or i guess the rematch that we're having now but that final uh moment between cloud nine and team liquid academies Stacks ASAP, Yawn already popping the heal because they're falling low to this Baron HP, but Copy knows that he can still get in there. This would be huge if Copy could make the steal despite a smite steal. He goes in for the double distortion. Armeo is able to secure it with the smite. Darshan not quite mega yet, but Copy is able to burn Ayla down. Darshan is going mega now. King went into the back line, but they slam Armeo and Harry into the wall. Jenkins is the only member that survives in the aftermath of the Baron. Team Liquid will still be able to survive with one Baron buff member on their side, but Cloud9 gets so many kills back. The Team Liquid, even in the face of a 0-2 tweet, in the face of the 0-2 curse from Reverse Sweep from Cloud9, oh. they find King, they find Sharp Fire, and Team Liquid, they will pick up their first Academy Finals title in the history of their career off the backs of Jenkins or Mayo Henry. Yon Ayla! And I just love looking at those moments because you still see so many of those star players from those highlight moments in this matchup today. Yeah, the the everybody that we're seeing, again, like 70s players were on these teams last year, and as they continue to play it forward, we're going to see how some of their new members are going to actually be performing in the teams because we know the rest of these rosters have had success. Cloud9 so far had two very different showings in their first week with Malice coming in, <laughs> and this is going to be their litmus test against one of the teams that we all know is going to be towards the top of the standings by the end of the split, and this is going to be their test. Are they the real deal, or was that a flash in the pan? Yeah, exactly that. And uh, I want to go ahead and bring up this Cloud9 roster and show off a little bit of the, the new pieces to the puzzle and especially the high profile jungler in Malice, but as well as, you know, having the, the mainstays in Copy, King, we've got Isles in, Darshan, the whole squad's here. And this super week is going to be very telling for this team. Well, and uh, honestly, everyone looks at Malice, but I have my eyes on Copy. Looking at how he's really Absolutely. grown as a player. You look at him last year. He's playing well, a lot of the roaming styles, trying to facilitate the side lanes. He's still doing that very well, but he's also able to carve out his own leads in the mid lane. He's a lot more effective when it comes to how he's able to gather himself the resources he needs to be able to then spread it to the rest of the team, try to see if he can set up side lanes, flanks as well. His LeBlanc play has been really good. You look at that, Twisted Fate is always something that you pretty much have to ban against him. And just seeing how this player has really grown is a great journey to see how he's going to continue to perform in this split. Yeah, absolutely. And on the other side, the uh, the winners of that matchup we saw the highlights of in Team Liquid Academy with a couple changes themselves, but some pretty notable ones. Oh, least. yeah. Uh, we got to pay attention to the places where they are different from last year, right? You still have Armeo, Harry, and Jan, who are going to be the solid core of Team Liquid, but the... They lost Jenkins to the LCS. Instead, they're replacing him with Bradley. And in the bottom lane, they still are waiting for CoreJJ to get in. So instead of Ayla, they are going to be continuing to play with Rhino. 
And it definitely feels like this team has been playing solidly throughout, but the big place where I'm going to be paying attention to in terms of a bit of a mismatch uh, is in play styles, where Malice really, really focuses on farming the entire time. He's constantly looking for ways to get a gold advantage and an experience advantage there, whereas Armeo has oftentimes been a little bit more of a defensive, almost passive <laughs> in the jungle, and it's going to be a big to test not only for Cloud9 as a whole, but also for Armeo, if he can withstand the kind of crazy pressure that Cloud9 was able to put on other teams last week. And I will say, like, talking to Armeo last week, and also watching some of his champions queue, the guy is just a general out there, man. And I, I want to see if that comes to fruition for this team, right? We've seen some rocky, ro rocky pieces for this uh, Team Liquid Academy roster uh, to some points, but... I think when it comes all together, they look just as strong yeah. as they had before. And especially with the new piece of Bradley in the top lane, a little bit double-edged sword. But you've got such a high high if he can get rolling. Uh, and I do hear, guys, we are ready for our first game of this series. So go ahead and take it to the champ select. Thank you so much, Marcel. Again, always good having you, but I am ready for this game. Matchup of the day, D9 Academy. They had a really weird first week with the roster fully completed. First two games, not so great. Second two games, really great. And having to see them now go up against Team Liquid Academy, a team that has been getting most of their pieces together as well, still missing that one in the bot lane. But Rhino has been playing far better. The, uh, as each week gets pa uh, passed by, he's doing a lot better in this bot lane to really help facilitate that of Yawn. I want to see how he's going to go up against King and Isles in this bot lane. Uh, I think the big thing for me as we start looking at it is, yeah, Rhino's been playing well, but across the board, uh, Cloud9 is just this roster that, on paper, should be running over a lot of teams just on their raw strength alone, right? You have a number of people who have played at the professional level before, and a couple of them even able to have winning splits. But this is a team on Team Liquid where I don't think they're going to be able to just run over them in the laning phase. They're going to need to be able to create situations where they are going to be relying on their playstyle and the prep that Tails oh. has been working on them with. And wow, okay, so a lot of people were suspecting that the changes to Corky this patch was going to remove this champion from the game, but Team Liquid still willing to go for it. Let's just talk about the small changes that were made to Corky. One, the first package was moved back from 8 minutes to 10 minutes, meaning that it is no longer available for the spawn of the first Rift Herald. And two, uh, after that, each subsequent package comes 5 minutes later, which means that it's not necessarily always guaranteed to be up for every <laughs> single time that a dragon spawns. And yeah, they're going to go for the Evelyn as well, Whoa! Magical. They're committing with the Trindamir. They're just going to oh. outform you. Yeah, they, they're just saying, you know what, farm, we're farming it up, baby. You're going to go for something a little bit more passive that needs to farm up as well. We'll do the same. We'll be able to outscale you and be able to outpush you back into your lane so that we can constantly have this pressure around the map. This is this is a crazy look already coming out from Cloud9. Typically, the way that most teams draft uh, is that they will go into the game saying, we don't know what kind of composition we're looking to have at the end of our draft. But we have a couple of ideas. We have a couple key components that we want to have in almost any version. We'll decide later on. Cloud9 is deciding right from the get-go that we are going to be trying to outfarm them. We are trying to wait for level 6. And then once we've done that, that's where we're going to start trying to take over. And Malice is a master at moving into his opponent's side of the jungle and taking away a lot of camps. And so it's up to Armeo, depending on whether or not he's playing this volley bear, to play a very proactive style to justify playing something that's not going to be able to farm nearly as quickly as the Evelyn. And the thing for me, I'm looking at this, and I'm just curious to see where some of the pieces for both teams go. The Trindamir could be for Copy or Darshan. We've seen Darshan play that quite a lot, even last year before he really became meta. And then the volley bear, like you said, Armeo could play it, Bradley could play it. Definitely yeah. has the flexibility for both sides. And that's why bands are more just trying to see if they can force certain things into certain roles, taking away two top laners out of Team Liquid, both the Akshan and Gwen, to try to see if they can force that Trindamir top side. Yeah, and the thing that's interesting to me, right, is I talk about this a lot. Corky does very little for the first couple of levels. He's yeah. got a decent level one a lot of time, but after that, he becomes kind of, kind of a liability for until he gets access to his rockets when he really starts getting to play for the first time. And at the same time, I'm kind of expecting that because of that, that's where the trainer <gasps> is going. Oh my gosh. No, 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 no. This is just, this is just DM, right? This is them <laughs> pretty much just calling out what we've seen in LCS. They, all right, we know, we know you're, you're, you're not sinners over there. You're praying to the church nine, 
but we're not going to really play that uh, Soraka mid lane. That would be quite a statement, especially since we do see that Trindamir on the other side. That'd be a rough pick. That's why instead they go for set. Yeah, okay. I mean, that tells us pretty much where everything is going. It's not completely ridiculous that Rhino ends up playing this set, but it is very much the Bash brothers coming in on the top side. You have very likely Bradley set and Armeo's Volley Bear going up against Cloud9, and I'm kind of worried that the way that these two squads interact makes it very, very difficult for them to actually lock down where Malice is going. You really need to, need to find some of these early game advantages. Otherwise, it feels like you're going to get kind of rolled over by the fact that you're going to get absolutely bodied in the mid game by the fact that it's impossible to lock down Evelyn and whoever ends up playing the Strindamir. No. That's why that last pick will be really interesting to see since I mean, there is a small chance that either Set or Volibear could be the support for Team Liquid. Might might be the ultimate set, bamboozle, maybe. but with that Scion picked, I'm expecting it to be Scion, uh, not Scion, uh, Set top lane. I don't okay. expect it to be anything else, but I want to see what they want to pair up for Rhino in this bot lane. He's been doing a great job on that Thresh, but not going to be able to have it this time. They got yeah. banned way earlier on, so Nautilus is something that I'm kind of wondering. You talked about being able to lock people down. That is a cool, good tool to help that out. Yeah. So we'll see what they end up going for. The Jace would be oh, a bit of a surprise. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it is going to be the set going down into the bottom lane, going up against Leona. And I do really like this counter pick because the amount of damage that you are able to put onto set is largely shrugged off by his passive. And it allows you to be really aggressive in this lane, especially once you get access to that Haymaker. And with Bradley going up against Sion, so let's, let's not beat around the bush here in... Solo queue, this matchup is miserable for Jace. You just get yep. stat checked really, really hard by the sign at basically all points of the game. But if you play it well, you can effectively free farm and scale yourself. So this axe asks the question, where's Armeo going to go? Is he going to try and get Bradley ahead such that it doesn't matter how strong Malice ends up becoming because Bradley will also be able to carry the game? Or is he going to just let that lane go as it is and let Jace continue to farm up so that by the time we actually get towards the later game, you have this Jace quirky combination that is going to be this massive poke and the hugely divergent styles coming out is absolutely why I think that this is my matchup of the day, Magical. These two teams coming out swinging. They've been working with the same players for a long time, so all the strategies should be very known, but we have such crazy opportunities for both of them to strut their stuff and show why we expect these teams to be towards the top of the standings at the end of the season. The only way we'll find that out is by loading up onto the Rift, getting ready for our first game of the series. I am so excited, especially with the draft, seeing Malice back onto that. Evelyn, he had great success on that in their second series last week. The Karthus, we already saw banned as well because they know how good he is on these farming style junglers, especially with how fast they can clear and how much impact he has into the mid to late game. So once we load up and get ready for this first game, my eyes have to be drawn to where Malice is and how he paths. So let's pay attention to it, Magical. We'll see what they end up doing. Obviously, you know, we can't learn a whole lot right out the gate, but we will be able to see where he ends up choosing to go pretty quickly. And he does have to make some early game decisions. Trying to get, trying to spot him out. I don't know if they know exactly where he is, but they definitely know where Armeo is at this point in the game. And nothing particularly surprising coming out in terms of summoner spells or uh, rune choices once again this game. That's the first thing I always look for instead both teams looking to be a little bit Down to just farm out quite a bit I'm actually surprised at the fact that our mayo going for a oh. very circuitous path Towards this bottom half of the map it makes me think that team liquid going to be looking for an early game invade But just getting down a little bit of vision Not exactly sure where malice is nor do they see isles just place the ward down playing it a little bit more cautiously not wanting to Throw caution to the wind in this game, especially not against Malice's Evelyn. One of those powerful picks that we've seen out of him. He likes to play the hyperscaling. And then you also have Copy on this Trindamir into Cor uh, Corky. We talked about the matchup. We talked about how Corky might be slightly okay at level 1. But Trindamir is one of these picks that wants to be able to scale up, farm up, and then be able to bully Corky at every stage of the game. Okay. Oh. Okay. Well, Rhino, he started with the Face Breaker, and that's actually punishing him. Not having that shield that he could rely on, he took a lot more damage and was only able to get the cleanse I mean, out of King. Actually, ignite two out of Isles. Yeah, I, I feel like Cloud9 was ready for that. They actually saw Yawn dip out of the bush at the very beginning. But remember what we were saying? There's a lot of sustain built into Set's kit. His uh, 
health regen increases based on how low he is. So he's going to be able to shrug a lot of that damage off, whereas Cloud9, that damage sticks a little bit harder. But nothing su super surprising coming out right out the gates. Just going to be allowing Team Liquid to push this in. Potentially have priority for an invade coming up from Armeo, but Armeo... He's just going for a clear. He's not necessarily the kind of player that we always think of as going for these crazy early game ganks. Instead, going to be doing at least a three camp clear. Going to be four camps before he looks for anything. Nice scene at the plate. Facebreaker comes in from Rhino as well with a punch from the Haymaker. Getting a lot of damage onto Isles. Without that cleanse, without that ignite, it's going to oh. be difficult for C9 to continue to follow this up. Romeo's here early. He's got the red buff. Is he even going to get to the red buff in time? He he oh! Oh, Malice was able to smite it, but here comes the charge. Not going to follow it up. Malice barely getting his buff. Yeah, Malice ended up learning that Armeo was there when the red buff ended up going towards a different path. But Team Liquid trying to make his life a bit uncomfortable, but Armeo giving up a lot of farm in order to make this happen, and nothing coming of this. This is exactly what happened when we saw Cloud9 play up against EG. Evil Geniuses with the Olaf for Tomio looking for a lot of aggression, not paying off. As copy, it's exhausted by Harry. Not too threatened. This is that power that we talked about with the Trinibir. He's got Ghost. He can always keep following up on a Corky, especially when the Corky doesn't have any mana. Uh, yeah, that's one of the tough parts about playing up against a Trinibir, right? Most of the time, you're going to be playing a mana champion. And Trinibir, you know, he can attack your health bar, but just as equally, he can try and attack your mana bar going for these trades because Trinibir doesn't have a real resource that he has to worry about. He's just got this bar that he's going to be using to heal back up all the damage that you are putting into him. So very easy for a copy to play this out and look at this damage that you can't interact oh, with. Oh, man. And this is what we talked about. Well, this is what you talked about. The matchup of Scion and Jace, how Brutal. difficult it is. Malice can just show up, puts down the heart, looks for the charm, is able to get it, and the flash from Bradley barely saves his life. Oh, they get the oh, first no, one anyway. Wait, what? Ah. Nicely done, Darshan. All Thumbs right. up. I didn't even get to see it. Yeah, Darshan, I mean, he ends up using his flash, but Armeo is here already down a level. This is the advantage that Malice was talking about, and with this huge wave, Bradley says, like, I don't want to go for anything. I can't afford to miss all this experience. Look at the fact that there's a two-level difference in the top lane from Bradley versus Darshan. It will be won by the time this wave is actually cleared out, but brutal. Isles gets caught. Isles does, but he's going to turn it back on to Rhino. It's going to be the Haymaker punch, but Isles still alive with the root coming in from King to save his support's life. Rhino, I mean, with the flash, trying to get the kill onto Isles, but unfortunately his AD carry doesn't also do true damage. Otherwise, they definitely wouldn't be able to pick that up, but going to be crashing this in the bottom side of the map. That replay. Oh, yeah, there's uh, the replay. Yeah, oh. just flashing forward. Good timing Max coming up from Darshan in order to pick up that kill. But this is what we were saying right at the very beginning. It is on our Mayo in order to try and make things happen, and, you know, he tried to make one invade happen. He tried to pick up the red buff and take it away from Malice, but I mean, this is this is what Malice talks about. He says he's not necessarily looking for wins. He's just looking to play well. He's looking to find opportunities to just get better, and you will find wins naturally out of that. So far, with the first kill already going over to C9, it creates even more pressure on Armeo to do something. I know. Wants to make a play happen in this mid lane, especially before Copy hits level 6. But it is answered by Isles. I know Isles is here, but actually, passing back towards the bot lane, this gives Rhino ample opportunity to look for a play. How much time before Copy hits level 6? It has to be getting kind of close at this point. Instead, just going to be going back towards the bottom side of the map. Once Copy gets level 6, Magical, you you more than anybody should know how dangerous it becomes for Harry. Because that's when you start looking for just solo dives. 100 HP yep. to 100 HP on both of them. Armeo trying to do something, but denying enough experience that Copy ends up getting level 6 as well. And that's unfortunate for Harry because we're going to probably see once that ghost is up for Copy that he is going to look for that play onto Harry. Especially if Harry sticks around in this mid lane with that low mana bar. Yeah, that's why he's starting to come down. I mean, one, get that tasty, tasty honey fruit. And also to make sure that his team is able to pick up the dragon. But, you know, at the very beginning of the day, I said that this is going to be one of the teams. Oh, well, here's uninteractable damage. Uh, yeah, I, was gonna say, I don't <laughs> think that's going to net anything, but keep going with it. Yeah. Um, what was it? Yeah, this is a team that you should not be able to run over off of laning stats alone. And Darshan, even with that first kill, it does not have an insurmountable lead over uh, Bradley. The bottom lane, 
is basically even the mid lane. Again, basically even. The only advantages that Cloud9 is currently building is the compositional one that they were trying to build. And this is why this is the first litmus test. Armeo needs to get this red buff. As he gets the stun onto Malice, Malice has that blast gun. Still wants to steal this away. Still wants to secure the red buff away. Armeo gets but it. it is going to be Armeo barely getting it. Yeah, but that's the pressure Cloud9 and Malice in particular put on enemy teams. They're just creating a lot of opportunities to go for these plays. And Malice now invisible. Bradley. Oh, no, oh spotted out. Now, he, now he knows. <laughs> uh, I don't even think Bradley was meaning to. <laughs> no, he has no either. idea. <laughs> he was just trying to get the minions, and then Malice just shows up, shows up and he's like, oh, wait, there's an Evelyn here. Hello. Hello. Well, Bradley at least gets the cannon minion here, and he does have a small advantage, but Armeo coming up right after Malice is gone. They don't know that Malice is no longer here, so they think that this might potentially be a 2v2. I'm looking at what the inventories are for both these players, Armeo and Bradley. Bradley, with a call and tear of the goddess, of course, you know, you're not expecting this to be a very interactive lane, but that makes it so that it's going to be difficult to actually cut through Darshan. And yeah. Armeo, just two ruby crystals. Again, you're not, it's not a really easy time you're going to have diving something like Cyan. You just don't have that damage to cut through him. Absolutely. Now, Magical, I want to take a little bit of time uh, to talk about how you're supposed to try and play against Evelyn, right? Because this is, oh, we'll uh -huh. talk about that later. Well, we'll talk about that later, because right now, Bradley's getting stat checked. He is just getting absolutely bullied by Darshan. When you have a tier and you have a call against this Darshan Scion, he's not caring. He's going, all right, 1v1, I can fight you. Yep, and look at the fact Malice is already here. Team Liquid's spending a lot of their time coming up with members. The Rhino is around, but by the time Bradley realizes that Malice is here, he might just end up going down. Look at the fact that Malice is looping around. Ooh. Oh no, and now Bradley's been spotted out. Goodbye. That's going to be a lot of damage coming in, and he is just going to die here. Ripped apart, sliced and diced by Malice, even though the Rift Herald is still being attempted by Team Liquid. They're going to be able to secure it. We've got Copy on the other side. He's holding on to Undying, waiting for the Rage to be able to go back in, but it's going to be a blast go and just get himself a little bit of distance and dodge away from Zap. Balls of steel from Copy, not throwing out the ultimate at all, knowing that there's no way the is going to try and kill him. The ultimate, oh, not oh. coming close at all. The Malice right now, that's a nice. risky spot. You've already used your ult. Why are you here, buddy? You're just giving a free kill over to Rhino. I mean, we're already seeing both versions of Malice that we saw previously. Most people would not come down trying to steal that, and he ends up getting caught because he has no support from the rest of the team. However, he also got the kill onto Bradley, right? He's creating a lot of pressure on the map, and this is where we're starting to see the advantages that Cloud9 are looking to leverage starting to pay off. Because they're creating this pressure and forcing Team Liquid to do things, they're going to be making concessions on the rest of the map. This time, the concession was the bottom lane, right? Where nobody was down here in order to try and stop King and Isles from creating, uh, you know, doing a lot of damage to the turret. And it means that there's three plates going over to King and Isles. And now, Armeo trying to create the same kind of pressure top lane, but Copy is already here to respond. Copy has that ult too, with Ghost available. I was curious to see if they really wanted to look for a 2v3 fight. And actually probably wouldn't be too terrible for both Copy and for Darshan, especially because if we look at the inventories from Team Liquid, I haven't really been able to fully complete any of those items just yet. But with these recalls now coming in, I'm watching the inventories and seeing if Gon might be able to get himself that completed mythic compared to what a King has. Yeah, I mean, it's a... Uh... I like to call them VECs. I actually don't like to call them. I've never called them that before. I don't know why I said that. But very <laughs> I was efficient. Say, when have you ever called them that? Very I've never efficient heard you that. components. Right? The things v that they have are very good. Copy. There's copy no, no mana. Here's Rhino. No, I mean, copy doesn't have mana either. Uh, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> that, that, that's a, that was a good stat right there. Yeah. But, you know, Copy's fine. He, he even saw that he had no mana. He's like, yeah, sure, Rhino's here, whatever. I could just yeah. clear out the menu wave, go back. I'll be fine. Yeah, I, the reason why I bring up how efficient these components are is because, like, the Warden's Mail is actually more effective at reducing damage than the Plated Steel Caps, right? Uh, the Bomby Cinder does a ton of damage in ways that, you know, the tier and the Longsword just don't. So even though neither Darsh Darshan nor Bradley are on completed items, the efficiency coming out from Darshan is so much higher, and now as he comes down from behind, Harry has to be careful with his package. Got the package, though, so he has that safety. We can see that the Cloud9 team are trying to rotate up, but it's going to be a 2v4 Darshan. fight before anyone's able to show up. Darshan's pulled back into the fight, and he's going to die to Armeo. Cloud9 realizing they were too late to the party. They have to go back, but they're still <gasps> hanging around the place, <laughs> utilizing the zombie form from Darshan to get a lot of damage onto Harry, even seeing if they can maybe contest this crash that will come in from Shelly. 
Okay, good usage of the E coming out from Romeo. They spot multiple people. But they got the stun, Whoa. and Malice just shows what happens if you step too far forward. Rhino will be the next casualty as he flashes over the wall. Copy has Undying if he needs to, but he's not even going to bother. Just instead going to get that flash, got the kill on to the jungler, and now they can rotate towards this dragon. I feel like they spotted people out, so Romeo just ends up going down. Bradley Ooh. trying to force out Copy's ultimate, not quite having enough damage just quite yet to finish the job, but it is going to be a trade of objectives coming in. Cloud9 and be grabbing the second dragon for themselves and we only have a thousand gold difference between the two teams and that still comes down to a lot of the initial play right when team liquid moved up for the rift herald they ended up getting the two plates uh reward after crashing it but they lost three in the bottom lane just picking it up in the first place so as we take a look at the replay we kind of get to see you know darshan just a little bit too far forward and the crazy ultimate Coming through from Rhino, making sure that Darshan is in a very awkward position. But here, I swear, this E was supposed to give them vision, and they still just walk in anyway, not respecting this, the raw burst damage that's coming out from the rest of Cloud9. And Romeo doesn't even have a chance to ult. I think what happened was you just, uh, the Sky Splitter came out from Romeo, but there was or if you look, Cloud9 had already backed off, and it only gives you a very small window of True. vision for Volibear. And I think he thought, hey, there's nobody here. We saw the vision, there's nobody here, so we could step forward. But Cloud9 had answered back. They had already moved back into the brush before he was able to regain any control. And that's one of those things where you need your spidey senses to tingle. Darshan, two levels over Bradley. Yeah, and he's not afraid of Bradley either. Did you just see that? He's like, okay, yeah, okay. whatever. I could just walk up and what are you going to do about it, Bradley? I have a you don't even heart. have a completed item. And, and I have a frozen heart. Again, super, super efficient. I think this is something that we've started seeing coming out from Cloud9 is... One of those Church of LS things, and I, I gotta say, like, I've been a big fan of this item for a long time as well, so it is good to see people building uh, the good items this time around, and it makes it very, <laughs> very difficult for Bradley to do anything. And with four auto-attacking members on the other side, five, since you have Rhino on the set, yep. this item is just going to be useful the entire game long. And Malice, same level as Bradley, and Bradley's just cowering underneath his turret. And speaking of good items, Harry. This is the second time we've seen him play this Corky going for Divine Sidere. He always keeps going for this item whenever I see him play oh. on to Corky. Well, we... And I just want to see when it's going to actually work. But right now, Bradley, okay, you're just dead. I'm not even going to bother. Going back to the items that we are talking about. Mm -hmm. Looking at Harry with this Divine Sidere and how it's going to really function, especially against someone like Darshan, as he's got that ability to kind of reduce the attack speed and absorb a lot of the pressure. Yeah, I don't know if you're watching Utility Monster, but I know you're going to be happy because it is, in fact, the highest win rate item on Corky, according to Loyal Uh I'm not as convinced, but I definitely think it has its place in the, you know, in this Wait, day I do age. have to ask this really quick yeah? question to interrupt you. How many games is that out of? Uh, I mean, in an average patch, it was rocking like five to six hundred. Okay, okay, so that's respectable. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to make sure it wasn't like double digits in that sense. Oh, no, no, no. Say, if it's it, only that much, it's like, of course it's going to have a high win rate then. Yeah, I mean, it typically, like on most patches, it will not crack a thousand games, but it'll still rock like a 54 to 56% win rate. So right. it's, you know, it's definitely something where there are games where it is the best item. And up against something like the uh, Scion and the Leona, it, this might be one of them where you okay. are instead going for, instead of going for like the poke build that has been very popular, a very different style where you're going for auto attacks. But it goes back to the fact that the uh, Frozen Heart is going to be even more effective this time because it has the perfect stats. It has armor in ways that reduce a lot of the damage that are going to be coming through instead of the pure magic damage that the rockets do. Well, here's Darshan back into the top lane. Yells at Bradley to go away from his lane, and Bradley listens. Because Bradley can't really do much in to the Scion anymore. See how the gold is really being distributed as well. There's a lot of gold into Darshan in this yeah. top lane over that of Bradley. But the ones that got to stand out, I mean, we already knew Malice was going to have a pretty substantial lead himself. Playing this Evelyn, 3-1. and one. Has completed a Magi's, by the way. The disrespect out of this player. That <laughs> is something I love, though. I love seeing that kind of build. Is it disrespect when you're already having such a good game? When you only have four stacks because you just completed it, maybe. Okay, m m maybe. <laughs> we'll, we'll see how well he's able to keep up stacks. It is going to be a lot of gold that is committed, but if they start chaining these kills, it becomes so much more impactful. The big thing that I'm curious on is we get to see once again, and we're going to keep talking about this magical, it's the difference that Malaz likes to exert. Just saying, you are forced to make plays, 
and I'm going to prey on all of the things that you are trying to do in order to make that happen. This Jace has not been working out so far, and while it is a champion that will be scaling later on into the game, it's going up against a lot of other champions that scale well on the side of Cloud9. So Bradley, pretty far behind, and they didn't really play around him. We didn't see no. a whole lot of pressure coming out from Armeo in order to try and make sure that this bad matchup was going to be going okay, and Malice now dropping the Rift Herald in the mid lane right before the Dragon spawns in order to pull Team Liquid out of position. This is a smart call from them. Plus, they got the pick on the Rhino before he could even pop the shield. It's a killing spree from Malice. Eight stacks now into the book. Well, King takes a lot of damage coming in from Harry and Bradley on the other side. They gotta be careful because Isles is low too. They want to get the spot lane out, but look okay. at Malice. It's gonna be the package in onto the back line. Malice is still alive, but finally shut down by Harry as Copy has popped the ult with the exhaust on top of him. Getting a little bit of damage can heal up, but he's gonna die before he can even heal. It is just waiting out on dying oh. for Yawn to pick up the kill on top of him, taking down his old teammate. Zap connects onto Isles too. King being chased down using Gale Force away, but with the double kill on a Yawn, the dragon is gonna be secured by Team Liquid. Great play coming out from Harry that entire fight. And at the same time, we're going to be seeing this team fight win coming out from Team Liquid, rewarding them with the dragon, overturning a lot of the issues that they were having compositionally, and it should get a little bit better. So let's take a look at a replay of this, right? Because Rhino starts us off. This is a 4v5 while a Rift Herald is hitting their turret, but the power of the choke points, baby, coming through. There are so many people here caught in the crossfire that you don't even know where to go. Malice just gets caught, and the amount of raw damage that ends up coming through just means that there is no way for King and Isles to come back into the rest of the fight and they are able to pick off members one by one so the same strengths that we're seeing coming out from Cloud9's composition are coming back to bite them and Team Liquid are not going to let Cloud9 get away with everything they want. Right now we go mid lane. King doesn't have mana. Gonna be the showstopper back. Looking for the grenades. Was nice. able to get a killing spree for Yon and Isles trying to be the protector of his bot lane. Couldn't do it. Armeo will take his own second kill. Yeah, Sky Splitter ends up picking it up, but that is going to be a lot of pressure. Yon can be the player that needs to carry this game. Already has most of the uh uh, oh my gosh, the super last whisper, the one that cuts down people when they have too much HP left over. But now Mal is trying to regard. find. Yeah, that one. There you go. I got you, bud. Thanks. Don't worry. But oh, Zoo. Juju Train, looking for Yon. Wait a minute. What? What was that damage coming in from Darshan? Even with the Gale Force, was able to get the Decimating Smash on top of him. Darshan, it might be tanky, but that's a lot of damage coming in from this Scion. As Armeo now finds himself in a bad spot. One v three has to flash over the wall to be able to survive. All the while, Darshan, he's not really too threatened by these members. Finally, now though, he is. he's pulled back in. He's got to be careful. He's got a shield to keep him alive with a rocket hitting him as well. No rocket from Yon though, so he will be able to make it out safely. Yeah, it's starting to get close. I mean, we're getting to see how insanely tanky Sion can really be. The fact that Yon was hitting him the one entire item. time. Yeah, I mean, but he reduces so much damage with both the uh, plated steel caps and the frozen heart. There's so little damage from auto attacks coming in his way. They absolutely need the Lord Dominic's regard in order to actually take this guy down. Bradley really needs to get those Cerillas, and once we have all these items start to come through, then we can talk about actually taking him down. But in the meantime, it's still pressure coming out from the rest of Cloud9, and now we start moving into not the Malice counter jungling part of the game, but rather the copy split pushing part of the game, where <laughs> it's still very difficult for members to try and take down this Trindomir. You have to devote multiple members to actually kill him, and that's when things start to get uh -oh. dangerous. Armeo, forced to okay. use the ult just to be able to get out of there. But you know, Okay, I've been wanting to say this for a while. You look okay. at the compositions that Cloud9 have and Team Liquid have, I might have to get interrupted here, but if you look at it, Cloud9, they have a very low range composition compared yeah. to that of Team Liquid. This is where we're seeing the difficulties for their comp. They might be able to get these flanks, get these picks for Malice initially, but it's about escaping from all the damage that's then thrown back at them by Team Liquid. But if Team Liquid play into their hands and just let Malice get a free kill like that on Armeo, they're just giving leads to Cloud9. Exactly. It's the kind of composition that preys on people who think that they're strong enough to move around on their own because Cloud9 are not going to be moving around on their own. They're always going to have extra people moving around with them. So Bradley, I mean, while he was waiting for the waves to come in, they just don't have enough wards to know where Evelyn is at any given point in the game. They are trying to get control wards down, but they're in the wrong place. And so now Team Liquid oh. have to try and contest this Baron 4v5. Look at Copy and Malice. They're looking for Yawn with the Moonlight Vigil on the one. The flash away. They could not escape. It's a shutdown for Malice. Rhino next target. Even though he dragged back the tank, he could not survive from that one. And that's more 
chapters in the book for Malice. The Baron could be started up, but I think they want to... Oh, actually, they're going to go for it. I thought they might want to spend first. No, I mean, Malice just can sit around on the side. He still has the ultimate. Yeah, still has that. Got to be careful. Going to use that just to get escape from the fight. Now look at where Isles is. He's in the back line, trying to stay on top of Bradley, but that's a lot of damage coming in from both the pokers on the side of Team Liquid. Looking to see with the low health bars on Cloud9, who they can get. Malice still hanging out, waiting to see if he can defend Darshan. Okay, well, they do end up trading back one good look for Team Liquid here, but Bradley has to be super, super careful. If he thinks he's strong enough, Malice, remember, is going to heal so much. Ooh, or he could just not heal at all. Well, he did heal. Yep. And just assassinate huh. for Bradley. But that's the thing. It doesn't matter how much HP Malice had. It was only a matter of how much damage he was able to do. That's a free assassination. We'll take a look at the replay. The big problem here is Malice, again, able to find his way to a flank. And once you can get access to the back line, Jan and Harry do not have a lot of tools to actually stay alive, even flashing over the wall, easily followed by the members of Cloud9. So Bradley now is going to be late to this dragon. Team Liquid trying to find something before the fight actually starts. And notably, Malice does not have ultimate for the start of this. He is actually a potential target with the package for harry as well it makes this one really dicey especially with the control they can have over the zone the engage was attempted by isles but look at the damage into the back line reiner's still alive with the help of the shield but he might die to king first before anyone else can back him up bradley just respawned he wasn't able to join in this fight the rocket comes out just to chip at the members of cloud nine but they could not stop them from taking the second dragon yeah, this, this composition coming out from Cloud9, they're playing it really well around a lot of these choke points. And Team Liquid, it forces them to be super, oh my gosh, super proactive and super accurate with the way that they're moving. They can't afford to have isolated members. If Rhino is spotted on any of the flanks that he's trying to go for, he's going to get blown up. And even with the set Haymaker, there's not a lot that that's going to be able to do in order to keep him alive through the raw damage that Cloud9 has to the to their team. Really, the only true front line for the side of Team Liquid is going to be Armeo. He's still only on that Turbo Chem tank, though. That's going to be the issue. How much damage can come in from each of these members out of Clyde now? And you look at Malice, 7-2-2 seven, two, and two on this Evelyn. 14 stacks now into Magi's with that magic penetration that you're gifted from the Hextech Rocket Belt, and then soon the Death Cap that will be completed. Malice is going to be able to annihilate anyone on the side of Team Liquid, including Armeo. It's going to be very difficult for anybody to stay alive, right? Just as you said, just the raw damage that is going to be coming out from Malice makes it so difficult for Team Liquid to move around. Again, they have to kind of death ball, and their composition is going to get pulled apart by copy. So it becomes a game of cat and mouse, very much. And Team Liquid, I think they're a team that can do it. Right? That's why this is my matchup of the week. This is why Team Liquid are one of the teams that had so much success. Why they won uh, playoffs last year and then got second improving grounds. Again, going head-to-head -head against 100 Thieves for all of that. But Team Liquid, they need to create situations where they are not going to get picked off. And look at look at Malice. So cheeky. He's playing with that vision. He's just like, nope, no back. And look at the damage on a Rhino. The last you know, press was not able to pick up the kill on a Rhino. But maybe <laughs> mm -hmm. King nearly does. Copy with the Gale Force not quite in range, but that's that's the fear, right? That is one of your tankiest members, almost just completely annihilated by Malice, just moving around and playing with Vision so expertly. So, how does Tim Liquid want to really respond to this? Are they are they going to be trying to play this really heavy poke style? If so, they need to start moving up, where they suddenly become at risk from getting engaged upon by Isles and Darshan Armeo. Spots out Malice, but a little bit too late. They know he backed away. That's an opportunity potentially for Team Liquid to take a little bit more control and get some vision down to spot out Malice as he moves around the map. The death cap completed for Malice too. That's going to be a lot of damage that can come in from him. If Rhino was able to survive before, now certainly not going to be the case. Hoppy though, he is actually the one with the flank angle here on the Team Liquid who are posturing. So they want to go for a Hail Mary, Mary Baron play. I don't know if there's a Hail Mary, just forcing people to respond to them. So Copy ends up getting over the wall, and crucially, Bradley still does not have access to a Last Whisper. He does not have the Cyrilda's Grudge, and he's going to be joining the rest of the team anyway. He does have the Last Whisper now, which means that he will be doing some damage, but Cloud9 is here. Sure, it's not the Hail Mary. It's down below 50%. Now 
Alice is on the other side. Copy. He's taking a lot of damage coming in from Harry, who's trying to chase the sand. Oh, but so all split. the while, the fight is happening on the other so side. Split. Malice looking for the angle. They have the split, but it's going to be the engage coming in from Harry with the pull oh, coming in right from They got a lot of damage onto one, but Armeo is the first casualty. Bradley's going to be the second one. Malice has found the angle to be able to assassinate these targets, but Harry's able to go golden for now with Yawn doing a lot of damage, forcing out the last Garus. Rocket not going to be able to connect, but they can flash in for a double kill coming in from Yawn. Malice too. He's going to be found out if Harry could keep these missiles coming on top of him while Isles is being chased by Yon, triple kill for Jinx. Malice now, it gets himself one kill on a Harry, but at what cost? And we get to see how the unfamiliarity with the Evelyn is hurting Team Liquid so badly. Yon is doing his best to try and stay alive, but Darshan coming through, they don't know where Malice is. No, and that's why they are so cautious on that play. They're backing out of it, thinking that Malice might be right around the corner, and so with that, they've at least been able to get some picks on the some members, but the one they really need to get to, Malice, was able to survive. And again, remember, we did the check-in earlier, he had four stacks, he's like, is this a BM book? Well, now he's got 22 pages in that book, but watch how split this fight ends up becoming from Team Liquid. They absolutely need to create a position where Corky and Jinx can hit together, but what, as soon as they split up, Harry is no longer really able to contribute DPS to Darshan in this front line, and it suddenly means that they're fight just becomes incredibly chaotic where Yon with one small play is able to turn things around and suddenly have more damage but if they had been together this fight would have looked a lot cleaner and it requires Yon to have a couple of these standout plays in order for them to even have parity in this fight. But the thing is that's the thing they got parity they're able to make it so they got three kills for Yon he's six one and four on this Jinx Lord Dominic's regard and Infinity Edge both completed that's going to be a lot of damage, and unless Malice can assassinate this Jinx, there it's he goes. Going to be difficult for them to deal with, especially when they force out the ult out of Malice like that. Isles also uses a stopwatch there, so there's a lot of pressure coming out from Team Liquid. Copy not splitting, instead he wants to come towards the rest of the team. This is a full-on team fight where Malice has no ultimate. Poppy, though, can easily get into this back line. Look at how he's posturing. Try to see if he can drag the members of Team Liquid towards him. It's going to be low onto the Baron, uh, the Dragon, but it's going to be secured by Armeo with Copy going in. Now it's pulled back away, and it's going to be a kill on Yon. That's the one they got. That's the one they needed out of Cloud9. Armeo over the wall, but the chase coming in from Copy, making sure that he's not going to be able to escape too easily. Can easily run him down. Slice, slice, and where is Malice to be able to get his final stack in his chapter? He wants 25, even with the stun. It's not enough. He is dominating. The Beautiful flint coming out from Cloud9, pulling the front line apart from Team Liquid, and they knew what they were going for. They just need to find their way to Yawn, and even though it's going to be another dragon picked up by Team Liquid, it is still Cloud9 who have control over this Baron. They're moving in, and with Trindamir and the Aphelios, it should be rather easy. They didn't even lose a single member. Darshan is even here to tank. Feels like Cloud9 are getting everything they could want except the Baron, and so there is, excuse me, except the dragon, so there is still small windows for Team Liquid to come back, but remember, game one, yeah, or the first series from Cloud9, total blowout, Cloud9 weren't close. Game two, Cloud9 dismantled Evil Geniuses. This is the first time that we are seeing these teams come together, and it is such a good litmus test because this game is so close. Right here, we take a look at this replay, and the fact they were able to get Yawn is the big play for Cloud9. We talked about how they needed a position around that, and getting the one carry out of the fight meant they could easily clean up from there. So we'll see if Team Liquid, again, requires a lot of precise moves. You need to be very proactive and make sure you're not going for any situations where you just get split up during these team fights. And again, look at the CS differential coming in from Evelyn over Volleybear. This is pretty much to be expected, but it is going to be a big reason why Malice is having so much success. He's got three levels over Volleybear. And he is in a strong position to four items completed, fully stacked Magi's. 10 and 2, four kills away from tying the most that we've had in the season so far that happened against him in one of their first games, uh, well, their first series of the split as a roster with Stixay getting all 14. Yeah, well, we are still waiting right now for things to finish up a little bit. We are seeing a lot of members of Team Liquid coming through to try and defend this bottom side, but Rhino, now he knows where Malice oh, no. is. Yeah, but we also know how much damage Malice can do. It's going to nice. be the pullback in. They got the kill on Malice, and there goes a lot of the stacks of that chapter, even though they got the kill coming in from King. All the while, Copy's just chasing Bradley in the base. He was able to get the kill on the side lane, but what is happening to the rest of your team? Yon's trying to peel back, but it's going to be this beefy front line that is making sure that he's not going to be able to get the damage into the back line and be able to carry for the team. They've got to be so cautious. Zap connects, but look at how little damage he does to Darshan. 
gun. And all the while, Copy's trying to open up the damn base with the rock coming in. It assassinates him. He's now excited. They can chase this back. Zap on to the tank. But it's going to flash in. Darshan. He takes him down. And that might just save the game for Cloud9 to win. Cloud9. I think it's tough for them to actually win the game here. Rhino's up in just a couple of seconds. But a couple of plays means that Team Liquid aren't losing the game off the bat. Armeo still sticking around trying to find something. But watch the amount of HP that Darshan's going to be getting back from this red buff. Rhino going to try and stop him. So it looks like it should be all done and dusted. And Darshan is just too damn beefy at this point. Even gone with the Lord Dominic's regard. It wasn't able to do nearly any damage to Darshan. And we take a look at this play. It is split all three lanes. Yeah, I mean, just really impressive play coming out from Rhino to actually take down Malice's Evelyn. But this is one of the tough parts about playing up against a Trindamir, right? If you are wrong about how much damage you do, if you are wrong about how long you can stay alive, you're just going to die. And that's what ends up happening. At the same time, in Darshan takes forever to get bursted down. You have to grind him down over a long time, and that's why we've been saying you need your Corky and your Jinx in order to actually kill Yo. this guy. Here's, this is the play where Darshan just flashed in with the shield to blow him up. Yeah. But with no flash left, Yon will have his available. Mal is coming in from behind. Oh, they have no this is it. And Yon is the target. He flashed and Gale forced away. He's alive. The rest wasn't enough. He's still alive. Cutting back, but look at Darshan. He's looking for him. It's going to be Moonlight Vigil instead that picked up a kill with no jungler either. 3v5. Cloud9 pushing into the base. Darshan absorbing as much pressure as humanly possible for Cloud9 to be able to escort more minions into the base. It is a last defense now from Team Liquid. They got to do their damn this. They have to make sure they fight back now or it is going to be game one for Cloud9. Bradley killed off by Malice. 12 kills to his name. Rhino2 is going to be taken down by King with Harry at his fountain. And Cloud9, they have bounced back beautifully in this season. What a great play coming through from the members of Cloud9. Nine. They know how to abuse the flanks that are always going to be coming out from the members of Team Liquid. They're constantly in a position where they're putting pressure onto the enemy AD carry. And this is why a lot of teams are looking at Cloud9 saying, yeah, they're going to be the team to be in a lot of ways. They're looking super scary. And it's not just the one team. It's not just Evil Geniuses who we saw were having consistency issues earlier. This was Team Liquid, one of the strongest performing teams across Academy over multiple years at this point that they were able to take down. And honestly, you just look at how Cloud9 were able to do it. I think the Evelyn pick, while being, you know, more of a niche pick, more of a comfort pick coming in from Alice, was a perfect pick against Team Liquid especially. Because of how it just wants to farm up. It just wants to be able to scale up into the game without having to worry about the enemy jungle looking for those early ganks, the early plays, these flashy engages to try to get their lanes ahead. He knew that Armeo is more about trying to see if he can control the opponent jungle as opposed to go, go in and snowballing. Yeah. And the question again, right, we know that even if you ban away the Evelyn, Malice has other champions that can do a very similar thing, that can mm -hmm. dance around you and create huge farm leads for your team. And so it becomes a uh, pressure for Team Liquid to try and find advantages and turn things around. And let's, let's be real. Cloud9, even with that win, made enough mistakes that Team Liquid could have been able to win that game. But Team Liquid, again, they're not quite used to playing this way. And it's going to be a continued tug of war as we look towards the second half of the series. And uh, that second half will come up in just a little bit. We're going to toss a break when we come back. Our lovely Frenchmen will be here for our halftime show. So make sure you stay tuned.